Okay, now we're going to look at an example that I showed you last time, but we'll draw the environment diagram for it so that we can understand exactly how it got evaluated. And this example is important because it will have multiple different environments and different expressions will be evaluated in those different environments. But first, let's just walk through everything that I told you last lecture about user-defined functions in one slide so that you have it in one place. User-defined functions begin with a def statement that defines the function. Looks like that. This is the whole def statement. It has a name for the function. It has formal parameters. There can be more than one, separated by commas. The body is everything that's indented below the first line. And in this case, the only thing in the body is a return statement. And a return expression follows the keyword return. And that gives the expression that gets evaluated, not when the def statement is executed in the first place, but that return expression gets evaluated when the function eventually gets called. Okay, so a def statement comes along, we execute it, what happens? A new function is created, and then the name given to that function is bound to that function in the current frame, so that we can now refer to that function and call it. We call it with a call expression that looks like this, square 2 plus 2. This has an operator as part of the call expression before the parentheses. So the operator is the name square, the value of the operator is a function, the square function. Within environment diagrams, we write functions as func, and then the signature, which is the name, followed by the formal parameters. The operand is the expression within parentheses, so 2 plus 2. Evaluating it gives us the argument 4, and that's what we're going to square. So operators and operands are evaluated first whenever we want to evaluate a call expression. Then, once those are evaluated, the function, which is the value of the operator, is called on the arguments, which are the values of the operands. Okay, so this last part about calling the function on the arguments, we can draw a picture like this, where we write the signature of the function in a pipe or a tube. The argument is passed in as the input the return value is what we get out of the function. And sometimes we saw there are side effects, but not in the square function. The square function is a pure function. Okay, the way in which a function that was defined by the user is called or applied is in the following steps. First, a new frame is created. Then the formal parameters of the function are bound to the arguments that are passed in, in that new frame. And then the body of the function, that return expression, is executed in that new environment. So here's the example that I showed you last time that actually involves multiple environments in one diagram. From operator import mol, so I define square as returning x times x mol xx. And now I'm going to square the square of 3. Square of 3 is 9, square of 9 is 81. How do we get that 81? Well, what's going to happen is that x is going to refer to different values in different environments, all in the same program. So we start out by evaluating square square 3, by evaluating its operator, which gives us the square function, its operand, which is square 3, Okay, so before we can move on, we need to evaluate that. So we evaluate square, that gives us the same square function, 3 is 3. We now apply the square function to the argument 3. What happens there? Well, we create a new frame, here it is. We bind the formal parameter, x, to the argument value, 3. And then we execute the body, which involves evaluating mol x, x. So we're going to multiply 3 times 3, because this is the current environment. We get 9. Okay, we're done with that part. Now we can apply square to 9, which means we insert another frame, 
because we're calling the function a second time. This time we bind the formal parameter x to the argument 9. So here's a new frame where x is bound to 9. Again, we evaluate mol xx, but this time x means 9. So 9 times 9 is 81. And that's what we get for the value of the entire expression. An environment is a sequence of frames. So far, all the environments we've seen are the global frame alone, or a local frame followed by the global frame. So let's find all the different environments in this environment diagram. There are not one, not two, but three. There is what we call the global environment, which is nothing but the global frame. So it's a sequence of length one. Then there are two different environments, each for one of the calls to the square function. Here's one of them. It's the square frame in which x was bound to 3 as the first frame in that environment. The second frame is the global environment. So this is an instance of a local frame followed by the global frame. And this is in the environment in which we evaluated mol xx the first time. And the second time we evaluated mol xx, it was in a different environment, which started with this local frame where x is bound to 9, and then was followed by the global frame. So notice that all environments end in the global frame. Everyone has access to it, hence the name global. These names, x, mol, square, they have no meaning without these environments. So every expression that we evaluate through the course of execution of a program is evaluated in the context of an environment. And a name evaluates to the value bound to that name in the earliest frame of the current environment in which that name is found. I said that last time. I told you it was important. Let's look at some examples. Let's say we're evaluating mul xx the second time. So the current environment is this blue frame square with x bound to 9 followed by the global frame. How do we evaluate mul xx? Well, when we look up x, we first look in the local frame, and there it is, so its value is 9. When we look up mol, we first look in the global frame. If there's no mol there, then we look in the global frame, the second frame of the environment. Okay, so this dotted arrow is meant to say, first we look in this frame, there's no mol, so then we follow the sequence of frames in the environment to get to the global frame, and there's mol. So that's where we get the multiplication function that gives us 9 times 9 is 81. 